Well, less than 100 days until opening ceremonies at the Paris Olympics. And after the Moscow terror attack, France has raised its security risk to its highest level. The military conducting counterterrorism drills and pulling back some of its opening ceremony plans, cutting the allotted crowd down by half. Hosting a global event like the Olympics takes years of preparations and billions of dollars to pull off. We know Paris 2024 will be the most technologically advanced games to date, featuring the highest security measures, things like facial recognition, high-tech surveillance, thousands of police and military troops, and employing the full force of the U.S. intelligence community for specialized anti-terrorism measures. So we're going to dig into that. We bring in News Nation national security contributor Tracy Walder. Tracy, so good to see you. Uh, we're talking about something that is massive. How difficult is it to secure an event as large as the Olympic Games? Well, thank you so much for having me, Nicole. And I think this is a really important discussion to have, especially right now. Look, it is an extremely difficult venue to secure. It's obviously very porous. This is a big city. However, I really have no doubt that the French, Paris in particular, is going to really lock down this city and really look at the amount of entry points and exit points. I think that's going to be step number one. Another thing that they're doing, which is, is unusual, I haven't actually seen this before in prior Olympics, is they are working with the National geospatial data agency that we have here in the U.S. And that is used by the CIA to conduct overhead surveillance, um, overhead espionage. And I think that's going to be really critical in a large swath of land like this. And I want to talk about that. So this, this National Geospatial Intelligence Agency here in the U.S. providing the Olympics Planning Committee with geospatial reference products. Talk about what that actually means in layman's terms, Tracy. So I'm going to be honest in that I think that they are being broad in general for a reason because they don't want to tell us what those products are to be completely forthcoming with you, Nicole. Um, but I worked with them actually a lot at the agency, and they are at the forefront in terms of providing geospatial intelligence collection. So we're talking things like digital satellites that can, from space, see license plates on cars. It's a much more efficient way to look at these large swaths of land. Also, we have another thing working for our advantage here. Although the French are not part of something called the Five Eyes, which are five countries that share intelligence really all the time, every day, the French are always sort of a plus one at the table of this. And so they are getting access to all of that information. You know, and Tracy, we have seen terrorist attacks overseas. In this intro, you know, we talked about Moscow. We've seen terrorist attacks in Paris. How real is the threat? I think the threat is very real, and I think the threat particularly right now in Western Europe, because of the things that are going on there right now, you obviously have the Olympics, you have the Wimbledon, you know, in London, you have these big sporting events that are really internationally attended, and I do think those obviously become terrorist targets um, simply because they will get the most attention. But I do feel, I really do feel that the French are doing an excellent job, and I do think other countries are very willing to help them. Absolutely. And, you know, this may seem obvious, Tracy, but what is your advice to people you know, who want to witness history? They are making plans to go to Paris to witness the games in person. Is there anything different that they should do? So I think, you know, you should go, right? I don't think that we should let terrorists dictate our lives. At least that's the way that I think about these things. But I know this sounds right. We've talked about this before. I think if you see something, say something. But I also think the important thing to do is there are free apps that you can download. A lot of times we don't know what 911 is in foreign countries. That's normal. But those apps will then connect you with 911 and emergency services in those countries. And so I think that that's a really important thing that people can do really as a reporting tool, quite frankly, for if they see suspicious activity. Absolutely. All right. Tracy Walder, thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.